Hello, Lola's. Welcome back to my channel. Guys that are new here, please make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Click the bell to be a part of the notification squad. I'll remind you at the end of the video because child what? If your memory is like mine, girl, you ain't gonna remember at the end. So you probably should just do it now anyway. Um, anyway, I am here with Sasha Poon. Sasha is my Gabigail Asleep kit, sculpted by Claire Tellen and painted by me. She is about 22 inches, I think, long. Um, but she is still baby, and I wanted her to be baby. So today I'm going to actually talk about a um, answer, a question from the comment section um, from Miss Linda Plummer. Um, oh my gosh, these cute little earrings just done fell out, child, when, when you're trying to be cute. I ain't put the bags on. Hang up. This is important. But the question that I've asked if you guys had some topics that you guys would like for me to discuss. And one of the, I'm going to read her comment and then I'm going to dive right into that. Um, I really like in answering like interesting questions and stuff like that. So topic suggestion, what makes a doll worth splurging on, not going on, going in debt, just splurging. Personal favorite, sold out lemon kit, limited edition kit, investment return. Oh, what do you consider when trying to decide whether or not to splurge? So I think those are like a couple of topics in one. But I'm going to tackle the one of what do you consider when trying to decide whether or not to splurge. But I'm going to start with accessories for the babies because that's where I'm at right now. I'm in a splurge mode for accessories. So I normally do not, and I've said this times, tons and tons and tons of times before, a lot of times um, after so many years of collecting, I got to a point where I just started, um, I started, you know, like not wanting to go out and shop. Um, one of the things that, oh, sorry, don't worry, she's not scratch, scratch, it just made a noise, it scared me. Um, one of the things that I, oh, that threw me off. <laughs> one of the things, that, she could, see, that's why I like texture. Um, one of the things why I kind of stopped buying, like, a lot of clothes and stuff is because at one point I was just buying clothes and clothes was just piling up. And I realized that if it's something that I really didn't just like really, really like, like I looked at it and said, oh my God, I got to put such and such baby in this. Then I just left it. I started leaving it on the rack. Um, I think years ago, Pooh Bear um, 253 had mentioned that and in her video. And she was like, if it don't really grab me, I'm not shopping no more because, you know, I found that I'm just, she was just buying stuff too. And I was like, you know what? That's true. So I kind of piggybacked off of her or followed her lead on that part long years ago. But then it got to a point where I had so much stuff in my closet that it was like, you know, once one baby wear it, um, I didn't really want to put it back on them. But if you put it on a different baby, it looks so different. So I stopped splurging so much on clothes. So here to accessories as far as clothes go, the only reason, only way I will splurge on an outfit, like say pay over $10 for it, is it something really, really odd, really, really cute, or very specific to a specific baby, if that makes sense. Like I'm not going to just be, oh, that's cute. No, it's got to be like, oh my God, I just got to have it type thing. Um, then I might spend $20. <laughs> I'm rarely gonna spend over $20 for something but I have I, I will say I have when I first got Noah I went to uh, Ralph Lauren and I bought him Ralph Lauren stuff and I spent a nice penny on it but I actually did use coupons and sales but I did spend on him um accessories as far as like uh bed like um baby furniture and stuff like that. I usually try to get that stuff bargain. I first started out, most of my stuff started out at um, the um, 
consignment shop, Once Upon a Child. Um, I used to get stuff from there, bring it home, strip it, wash it, and then set it up for my babies. And over time, I've been giving it to real babies. Like, you know, people, young girls having babies. I'd be like, my daughters would be like, Mommy, oh, she, she, you know, just had a baby. She's not working or she's in school. She's young, da, da, da. Do you have anything you can put together for them? And I'll put a package together or whatever. Uh, me and my girls will come in here and we'll sort stuff out. And they would pick stuff for their friends that got babies. And not that the girls and all of the girls really needed, like, didn't have stuff. They had, you know, the father and the grandparents and stuff like that. But, you know, with real babies, they outgrow stuff so freaking fast. It's, like, kind of like a waste to spend a lot of money on their clothes at that point. So, I'm like, they can use these clothes. They only been on dolls. Most of them was, like, brand new, just worn once. And they can do whatever afterwards or whatever. So, that's... You know, that was that. And the little, like, um, rocking chairs and stuff like that were, like, $25 that I spent, you know, and stuff. But then I got to a point where one time I bought something from Once Upon a Child, and I don't know what it, what happened if it, I, it had hair on it or a stain on it or something, and I washed it, and I got a phobia, you know me. And then I just started buying new stuff at that point. But I still would shop, shop sales and, you know, bargains and try to look for one that's, you know, within a certain price range. But I will splurge on a very special baby with accessories. Like if, if I'm expecting a baby or I have a baby that I really, really feel like I'm going to keep... <laughs> which is funny kind of that I'm going to keep for a very long time or it's going to be in my bedroom um then I will splurge on a piece of matching furniture something bed rocker swing that that baby will be in there to to coordinate with my bedroom um I don't really worry about the nursery stuff as much if that makes sense which is kind of crazy but I do want to I do want to have a nice nursery but it just haven't I haven't got there I need a like a interior decorator like come in and figure this space out like mm. anyway so that's that now let's get to the good part now that we're seven minutes into the video hold on hold tight let's talk about splurging for the actual doll and stuff and i'm gonna put her try to see if she'll fit in this little romper i don't like to cover her her up completely it just drives me insane but um splurging on a re like the doll itself um here lately i bought a few very high-end pricey reborn babies um, um way above what i normally was spend for a reborn baby but um it was something unique about the artist style something that i that was really you know that really drawn me to their work and I just had to, felt like I just had to at least experience it once in my collection. And so, um, that is what will make me splurge. Um, usually for reborns, I try not to spend like over a certain amount, but there are some that, you know, I feel like is very special. You know, the way the cut, the, the skin tone, like if the skin tone is really like dead on or something and it's very hard to get that sometime. Um, I will, I will, I will step out on it, on it. Now, when it comes to silicone babies, um, I will splurge on a high quality baby like the i can be drawn to a baby and like a baby like there's a baby that i really really like but i feel like the price for the kit is a little bit too pricey for the sculpting itself if that makes sense so i won't splurge on that but if it's a baby that i really really like and i feel like um the sculpting, everything is, you know, in my opinion, really, really nice and stuff. And I feel like um, 
if I ever had to sell sell it, resell it, that I wouldn't be like just throwing away my money like that type thing, then I will um I will buy it. And then there is the very one off situations that I've rarely had, but there are situations where it doesn't have to be a popular doll. It doesn't have to be by a popular sculptor or a popular artist. But if the baby like really like reminds me of one of my children or somebody in my family or, you know, an entanglement that I feel like we might have would have had a baby to look like that or some old crazy odd connection to the doll itself after you know, I see it and it's like fully done and all that and stuff. Then, um, <laughs> then I will, um, I will splurge. I definitely, I definitely will go in and buy that baby. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll just, I'll just buy it. And even if I know that it's probably not, if I ever have to sell it, I'm probably going to lose money on it. If I just really, really want it, I don't care. It, at that point, I don't care. It's an emotional investment. It's not about how much it costs or whatever. Even, you know, if it's just... Sometimes, you know, every now and then I will splurge even on just like, like I said, it's a very emotional thing or like someone that, you know, I really like, um, you know, them as a person or, you know, there's a history there with us and you know I'm a fan of theirs or something like that and I just want to have one of their babies in my collection so when I get to be an old lady chewing tobacco you know gumming down my grits in the morning I can look back and say you know what picture it Cicely 1922 I was a young fine old sexy thing and I was collecting dolls, believe it or not. And I, there was this one lady. She was sweet as sugar. And I just loved that lady and the things that she would say out of her mouth was just so funny. And you know what? I bought that little baby over there, that little pixie baby. And it was just as cute as a button to me. Because I could see all her personality into that doll. And so I bought it. And I've kept it and held on to it for all these years. Now God knows it ain't worth much. But I just love it anyways. I just love it. That is my favorite. That old maple was something else. God bless her soul. Okay, so... That, that, that's how I want to be when I get old. Also, I want to be old and say, I remember when I painted that baby. You know, I, 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 I don't even remember how I come up with those colors and that. But I used to get in there in that room and I would paint my little heart out. You know, I want to be able to do that. I don't want to be to the point where I get old and I can't look back 10 years. Oh, I can't look back five years because everything that came in my collection, I've sold. I really don't want to be that person. But I'm, like, not doing a good job at it because it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm really going totally opposite of what I want to be. But that's how I be sometimes. Sometimes you want to be a superstar and you be a crackhead. I mean, you know, it's just a luck of the draw. But I'm going to work on it. I'm a work in progress, as some of y'all might say. Don't blame me. I'm just... Oh, this baby. But when I tell you she rooted this baby out, literally one freaking strand. One freaking strand. Like, one strand. Like, ain't... When I tell you this health... Let me see. I thought I seen two in one. Hold, let me tell you something. This helper ain't put not two whole... Two pieces of hairs in one whole... No well. One scran. I don't see how she did it, child. Oh Lord, child. That's why I'd be like, baby, what listen, them couple hundred dollars I, I I pay per head, it'd be so worth it. Baby, I am not not ever. That's one 
that's one thing I will splurge on. I will splurge on some rooting. Because, baby, listen, who ain't finna do it is me. Now, look, her head look like it's, it look, I know, like, when you look in the camera right now from where I see, it look like it's, like, she got a whole bald spot. But baby's hair are very baby fine a lot of times. I mean, some of our babies be born with real thick hair. But because it's rooted, like, one strand at a time and it's actually you know baby fine mohair it looked like that because you can see through the hair and it's a it's a mix of a medium brown but she doesn't have any ball spot and it's very full actually like look but it's just it it just it's not it's full but it's not thick because of the hair the, the quality of the hair is very Look at this. Because the quality of the hair is very fine. And that's the thing. That's another thing. But we'll talk about that in another video. Y'all hold tight. I was just going to tell y'all. I don't. I don't be knowing how to pick out the right mole hair. So that it. You know what's going to give me thicker or thinner. Because you be done spend all the time rooting in the baby's hair. And then it don't be super thick like you think it's going to be. Because you don't. It's you know it's full. But. I don't know, but I love, I, I, I really love the way that it lays and stuff. She'll say, I'm so sweet. This is my favorite. This is my favorite purple. All right, so I'm going to answer the next question next in the next video. So see you guys later. Bye.